Hi my friends, got the rollers in today. Um, the theme of this look is something I've been kind of playing around with a little bit lately. It's just sort of a soft, very feminine makeup look. We're talking very real looking, touchable skin, yet beautiful coverage. The eye look will have a little feminine hint of rosiness and some soft definition. And something I think is so beautiful on the lips is a beautifully defined Cupid's bow, and we've got a great lipstick that's going to cater to that as well today. So I hope you follow me. I hope you kind of get my theme that I'm going with here, and um, yeah, let's get started. I will let you know I first put on my e.l.f. Retro Paradise Primer Glow Oil. I just kind of got my skin warmed up a little bit with that. I put on my sunscreen, and now we're going to get started with a really special foundation that I'm trying to rediscover in my collection. It's from RMS Beauty, and it's called the Uncover Up Cream Foundation, and I wear this in the shade 11.5. comes in this nice little frosted glass jar, and and I swear, the effect of this, I'm always so impressed after I put it on. And it does feel like rich and creamy. If you take your finger off of it here, see how there's like peaks? It's not just a big tub of gooeyness. There is some definite thickness to this, but it's a thick cream foundation that does not look the least bit dry on the skin. That's the important takeaway here, because I think we've all experienced those cream foundations that are coming out of compacts, and they're more like a cream to powder thing or they just always end up looking drier on the skin than you think they would and this is a kind of a dewy foundation but you're gonna be so impressed I think with the finished look and the tone of it there's a little bit of peachiness in this shade and I feel like it almost like fully corrects my skin tone you know it just gives me such a pleasant looking skin tone when I'm done I think a beauty blender works nice with this but I'm gonna use my um, real techniques expert face brush today I also really like just the stiffness in this brush and I think it works with that thicker feeling cream really nicely. Um, and you can just see as I blend in one side of the face, it looks so like real and touchable. The dewiness or the hint of glow that your skin has from this does not look artificial in the least. And a brush like this, or like I said, a beauty blender, really works it into the skin effectively. Oh, I've got some tenderness on my forehead because I was cleaning up some clothes the other day uh, toward the foot of my bed and I bent down like really fast to pick something up and I just knocked my forehead so hard on the little like you know thing at the foot of the bed and I guess I'm fortunate to not have some huge bump or bruise there but it is kind of tender whenever I go over that area so kind of a combination of pressing this in buffing it in you can see the coverage is beautiful there's kind of a glow to it but it's a real like fresh skin like look I've got a hair that just wants to stick in there and then here's a new thing that I got from I believe it was from QVC recently I wanted to try this Tarte CC under eye corrector. I've had kind of a bad run of under eye correctors I've liked getting discontinued. <laughs> of course I really like Benefits Erase Paste which turned into Boing Brightening Concealer. That's a great one. And then Bobbi Brown had this serum corrector that was out for like a hot minute when I discovered it and then that's kind of gone by the wayside. This is beautifully brightening. This tone um, light medium. And I do really like the consistency too. It feels a lot like original Erase Paste. So I've got a little bit of melasma that's coming through right in that zone and also this is great for those bluish under eye circles. I had a terrible night's sleep last night with Bubba. Um, the teething is just... We'll get through it, we'll get through it. But um, I'm just applying that all around that area. I think I'll work just a little bit maybe down the nose just for some brightness and continuity there. And then I can use this little Real Techniques, um, it's actually a highlighter brush, but it fits really well in this zone. Works nicely on any under eye concealers I wanna use. And I can just press that in. I don't know if you can see the really nice correction, really with the under eye darkness, but it's doing pretty good with the melasma too. Melasma, if you're not familiar, that's something that for me, a lot of times I get the question, how did your melasma go away? And really it's something that I think is very much triggered by like being out in the sun. And also I think hormones can cause it too. But like right now I'm obviously, I'm not pregnant. 
Um, so I don't really have that bringing it on, but I do think, you know, sun exposure can bring it out on me. And then, you know, you go through some months where maybe you're just not outside quite to the degree you are now and it fades, you know, it actually does fade. Um, I may reach a time in my life where maybe it won't come out at all ever. That would be nice. Uh, but I know my mom had this too. I'm just building up a bit more right out here, but I don't do anything specifically to like remove it from my skin. I just kind of have the knowledge that um, I want to be really diligent with my sunscreen all the time and that can, I think, minimize the effects. I mean, I had it really dark one summer. I think it was the summer before Belle was born and that was when it was kind of taking me by surprise um, how much I was actually dealing with that. And now, you know, it's a lot lighter because I'm really, really careful. I put on, you know, a lot of SPF every time I go out or I know I'm gonna have like a couple hours playing in the pool with the kids or something. I really make sure to slather that on. Also in the spirit of rediscovering some things, I busted out this powder from RMS Beauty here. It's the Tinted Unpowder. I have it in 0-1. And this was just another thing from this brand where I thought I haven't used that in quite some time. I think I want to reacquaint myself with that. As you can see, the powder has a little bit of a tint to it and it feels just super duper light to the touch. So I'm just going to get some of that on my e.l.f. Small Tapered Brush and I'd like to take that over my T-zone and my under eye. And for me, even though I have normal to dry skin, that'll be the area where things start to break down on me or just don't look so fresh later in the day if I don't take measures like this. So I'm just kind of dabbing over that with this powder. And I see a bit of a mattifying effect, but it's extremely light. The powder itself is just very lightweight and fine. So it's nothing real drastic here. We still wanna keep that really nice, touchable, skin-like look going on. And then on the rest of my face, I do have this powder I'm just kinda of trying out. I thought I'd work it into this video as well. It's the new CoverGirl Clean Fresh Powder. Um, this is in the shade called Light. I just got it in a recent Target drive-up order. There's a little puff in here. It really doesn't seem like anything super different or exceptional. Do you remember the classic clean powder from CoverGirl that smelled like Noxzema? Well, this doesn't have any scent whatsoever. So I'm just gonna pick some of that up and gently buff that in elsewhere on the face, just to kind of even out my overall texture. I think you could apply a lot of this powder and it could look real matte. Um, I'm just sort of trying to keep it light on my brush. This is my BK Beauty 107 brush. It's the one I mentioned in the favorites video. This is just a really great multitasker. So now that that's on, I'm gonna do a little bit of bronzer. And I wanna keep the bronzer light. I'm not going for a real harsh, severe contour either. I'm using my Bahama Mama from The Balm and just gently dabbing my brush in. A little bit of this powder goes a long way. And I wanna give my skin that little bit of a sun-kissed look, but we're not seeking a super like angular, intense contour, you know? I was reminded in a recent video just how much I love the tone of this bronzer. It's so perfect. But again, little bit, tap off the excess. You can get a soft contour going without looking incredibly chiseled. See how this can look like a really nice little natural shadow almost? That's what I'm going for today. And then we're definitely gonna keep it going from the balm and we're gonna use our Will Powder Blush Quad. Loving this so much. This was in my like cute makeup, adorable new makeup video. This is one of the faves, my friends. I love what's in here. There's like this matte berry colored blush, two shimmery blushes and a highlight. And you can really get a lot of different looks with this. Today we're gonna focus in on the shade called Dedication, which is the shimmery pink blush. So I've got a little bit of that on my brush here and I'm gonna swirl this on the cheeks. Just kind of starting out on the outer part of the apple of my cheek and going upward and getting that pretty fresh pink youthful flush. I just really wanted you guys to see how pretty that shade can be on its own because I think I may have referenced it as like, yeah, you can just pop it on on top of the other blush, but it's a terrific standalone blush as you can see. And the little bit of glow that it has is just fantastic. And then you can't not use the beautiful highlight in here called Worth the Wait. It's so pretty. It also has a hint of a, just the slightest hint of a pinky tone that I see in this, especially as it shears out. And I'm just gonna gently buff it in. 
Um, I'm not looking for a big highlighter streak or something really over the top, but I love when that glow comes down to the top of the cheek. I think I've called that juicy cheeks before. Buffing, buffing lightly and gently. Just a little bit of product on the brush. And then if there's anything left, let that kind of come up to the forehead. Makes for a really, really fresh face that I think looks like it has beautiful coverage, but yet there's something kind of touchable about it. You know what I mean? I think I'm gonna finish that face off with a little bit of Milani Fruit Fetish uh, spray here. I love this scent called Kiwi Watermelon. Oh my gosh, this is so good. Mm, I just wanna eat that, I wanna drink that. I wish this was like a flavor of Kool-Aid. I could just take it down right now. With the brows today, we're gonna kinda keep that soft and gentle vibe going. Um, this is something I've really been liking lately. It's my Glossier Boy Brow. And I think these tinted brow gels are a nice way, if you can swing it with the way your brows are, they're a nice way to just gently fluff up what you got going on naturally. Maybe thicken up a few key areas that aren't quite even left to right. But everything looks so soft and not like a really done up, carved out brow, you know? I think there's beauty in seeing that you have actual hairs in your brows and not just kind of like pasting everything down or trying to make it look very drawn in. So um, I kind of like that natural look that this gives. And I'm not applying much pressure into my brows with this, if you're wondering. I mean, I'm just kind of like letting it graze the brow hairs and then where I do want a little more fill in, I'm pressing just a bit harder, like maybe out here toward the outside. Another product I love for this purpose is the M Cosmetics Micro Fluff. That would be something that all in all, I would press a little bit harder with just to get a little bit more of an effect, but it's overall more subtle than this. For whatever reason, the boy brow just plays really well in my brows. It gives me the look I want and it does so very quickly. Next up, I'm gonna apply a little bit of eye primer. This is my Milani eyeshadow primer that I love so much. Only gonna use a tiny bit. Um, that's just what benefits me most. If I used a lot, it would tend to maybe collect in my crease a bit more. If I just use a little, it's enough to coat the lid and then bring anything left right up like that all over the whole um, eyeshadow application surface. So there we go. And then I'm gonna go ahead and bring in my ABH double-ended pencil here. This is the Matte Camille and the Sand Shimmer. So I love this for giving me some added brightness in the lower inner rim. And yeah, you can just take off and do this at the start of your look. No harm in that at all. You can take the shimmery side and kind of let that come right around the inner corner for a little glow, maybe a little under the brow here. And you're just kind of all like primed and set for your eyeshadow look. Okay, I've been really wanting to show you guys this little palette in action. This is my Bare Minerals Gen Nude Rose Eyeshadow Palette. It's like the most subtle integration of a rosy shade, but this is a pretty good like rose gold, if you know what I mean. It's not too warm, but it's just like this beautiful rosy metallic. And as I was saying in my favorites video, I really like how it's paired with some cooler shades. I think it gives this whole look a really pretty softness that some of the warmer palettes, you know, they're nice and all, but it's a little bit more unique. So what I'm gonna do first is actually go into the shade called Haze with a fluffyish brush and I'm going to actually just apply that over like the surface of the lid, up into the crease and up under the brow. Just get a little bit on there, tap off the excess. The textures of these shadows are so nice and pigmented, you don't need a lot but get a little bit there and kind of prep the entire surface of the eye because your darkest two shades here are pretty intense and I've gone straight in with like soul in the crease and it can work, but it's fairly dark and it goes on just a little easier if you do prep the area with one of those sort of base shades. So now I'm taking soul, the softer of the two grays, and I'm getting that right there in the crease. Again, the look we're going for overall is like a soft kind of gentle application. No harsh edges, nothing incredibly loud, just a really gentle kind of nice classic look. I mean, this could be a pretty bridal look potentially. Okay, so see how we've taken that and we've given ourselves this nice shadow 
right there in the crease with our Sigma E25 brush. Now I want to take Boho. This is a little bit of that rosy shade. And see how it can do more than one thing? It's not just a one trick pony. You can put that on the lid for some nice intensity or sheer just on the outside as a transition type color. Takes it in a whole other direction. You see some of the pigment of that shade, but not all the metallic quality that it has. Next up, I wanna take Boho now with a flat brush. And now it's really gonna shine. It looks so pretty right on the lid. Just patting it on, gentle swiping motion, going from the inner part of our eyelid to about two thirds of the way across kind of brightening. It's that little bit of rosiness, not too over the top like, hey, we're doing a pink eye, but see what I mean? Just gentle. We've already got that brightness around the inner corner that we use the ABH pencil with. And then I'm going to take the color called Stargazer. So this is our deeper shade. Yes, this is a very like textbook Emily eye, but I love it. And we're just patting that up right there to the crease. Flip the brush and you can kind of pull it upward and get just a little gentle lift. Not going for any big, angular, harsh type of thing here. And not really the kind of eye look that screams, hey, look at my eyeshadow look today. You know, it's got a gentleness to it, a muted quality. When I say flip the brush over, I mean I'm taking that part that was doing all the color application there, and then I flip it so that it's also now giving some color to my crease. And then feel free to go back in with your E25 brush and just kind of buff out that edge. Be careful that you're not dragging your brush, dropping that blending down like this, because we want everything to be in sort of this upward direction. Then something I really loved doing with this palette the other day that I wanted to share with you is that I took Stargazer with an angled brush and I let this be really soft eyeliner. I just very gently let this come all across the upper lash line and I just really liked that look. It's kind of a different vibe for me because a lot of times when I'm doing eyeliner, I'm going for a liquid. I'm going for something pretty dark. And here you're getting the softest definition. If you take this really, really deep gray shadow and just kind of stamp it across the lid with an angled brush. If you're also very like timid about eyeshadow and you're just really beginning where that's concerned, this is a very easy way to get into that because they're just, it's so soft. If you don't do it exactly right, it's, it's okay. But isn't that the story with all makeup? It all just washes off in the end. Then I think I'll take a little bit of soul with a pencil brush. All I want is a little softness right down here. I'm kind of connecting it up with the outer corner of my upper lid and just letting it fall down. I thought I'd pull out a mascara that I really like for sort of a soft, fluttery lash look. Um, nothing really loud, nothing super over the top here with a false lash, but um, we're going to use L'Oreal Lash Paradise. So I'm just curling my lashes first because, I mean, that's how they're visible, y'all. If I didn't curl my lashes, I could have a fairly full lash, but it's pointing downward and you're not going to see it. So I really do need to take the time to curl it. And then here's my Lash Paradise. And I'm just going to wiggle that up through the lashes and it's going to give us a nice kind of delicate fan of lashes, but still visible. You know, I'm not, I'm not about that barely there lash life. Like I want to see it but I also want it to have some softness. If you haven't tried sort of pulsing your lash curler as you curl your lashes, you might give it a go. That was a tip from my friend David and it's just, it's something I've done literally ever since he mentioned that because it does really do something for the curl. Wiggling at the base of the lashes, letting that um, pass of your wand or your comb brush <laughs> um, go all the way up past the ends of the lashes. That's how you really build length. And I do think for this look, I am interested in having a little bit of a lower lash going on as well. Um, wanna keep it light. I'm using a little bit of my Thrive Liquid Lash Extensions because, let me tell you, this heat and humidity, I need something down there that's not going to travel. So this really does a great job of not smudging because it's a tubing mascara. 
So see what I mean? I've just got a little bit of fringiness down there, but not too much thickness. Now for the lips, I would really like to go for a very nicely defined um, Cupid's bow. And there's actually a lipstick out there that is very innovative and it's shaped all the way down the bullet so that you will never have um, a sort of rounded off lipstick bullet. And it's these from Sigma. It's very interesting because I didn't think about this so much that when you get a lipstick, typically you don't have this little pinch to the teardrop shape all the way down. Like normally it's that way at the top, but then it fades down to just a rounded bullet by the time it gets down to the bottom. And that's why we're always putting on these rounded off lipsticks, right? So this one is always gonna keep that nice shape so you can really define your lips with just your lipstick. So from Sigma, there's a couple shades I really like. Um, I'm kind of in between on what to use today. This one called Temptation is just a little bit deeper. It's like a deep dusty rose. And I do think there's something very feminine about reaching for a color that's really going to show up as a color. You know, you might think, well, I want to go soft and barely there nude, but I think there's a real feminine quality to the lipsticks that show some color. Um, then I've also got this shade here called Epiphany, sort of like a soft rosy nude. What I think I feel like doing today is actually taking this shade called Temptation and we're going to apply it pretty softly. And um, there's a beautiful like satin finish to this, but I want to show you how this Cupidsville, it's like that, and it's gonna continue to be like that because the bullet is literally shaped all the way down. Now I'm gonna take it down like this. I kind of mush the lips together and then apply a little extra definition to the outside lower lip here. See, isn't that pretty? I kind of like that tone. Then maybe throw a little bit of a gloss on top for a little added softness. I'm trying out this Glosstopia Ultimate Lip Shine with Hyaluronic Acid. Is Hyaluronic Acid not the mega ingredient buzzword these days? Um, this is the shade called Opal Tease. So it's a little bit of a like shimmery pink and just apply a little bit of that right down here. It kind of gives you a nice smoothed out surface to the lips and just brightens up that color just a little bit softens it up somewhat. One last thing that I'm gonna do that I love to do anymore at the tail end of the look like the very very last is I take out my Bare Minerals Hydrating Mineral Veil tap a little bit of that just a bit into my cap pick it up with that 107 is that right 107 yes BK Beauty brush and then just swipe this all over the face Something about this, it gives you this like soft focus, like extra soft look. It takes the edge off sometimes um, highlighters that got a little too metallic, blushes that got a little too intense, blending that just wasn't perfect. It's like this little, okay, we're gonna correct you <laughs> just at the end. Very hard to explain, but it's a beautiful powder with this texture that's just light as air. And I really like it around the nose and kind of that pore zone. And now shall we leave the camera on while we take out the rollers, yes. I love a little hot roller glam, especially when I haven't worked with them that much recently. It really makes an effect on the hair. I'm in that period of postpartum where I feel like I'm losing a lot of hair, so this helps me feel like I have a little more hair. But I hope you guys enjoyed this look. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you always for the great video ideas you bring my way. I appreciate them so much, and I'm always looking through the comments for them to add to my list. So thanks in advance for that, and I will see you guys again very soon. Bye.